गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म सिंह हॉर्टिकल्चर फाउंडेशन बी एस एच एफ ए नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड माई सेल्फ वेलकम यू ऑल टू द टॉक नंबर एटीन ऑफ दिस सीरीज नेम्ड एज फॉर एच अर्बन हॉर्टिकल्चर फॉर हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस बी एस एच एफ इज थैंकफुल to bear semenis to sponsor this webinar series i welcome the organizer dr shailendra rajan former director icar central institute for subtropical horticulture lucknow the webinar today is on cultivating health phytochemicals in herbs show the way for wellness and happiness by professor dr shuman preet singh khanuja founder chairman flora fauna science foundation lucknow and distinguished professor bioengineering and food technology soloni university solan himachal pradesh dr khanuja is former director CSIR CIMAP Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants Lucknow very well known institute and where he had uh, more than 7 years as director <laughs> and after um, 2008 when he superintended Dr Khanuja held several important position in nutrition food and modern bio medicine industries of repute in the country and abroad there are number of them and dr khanuja has won several awards some of the awards are csi r technology award for life science 2012 then csir award for innovations in rural development 2008 vaswik award in biosciences and technology for research in biotechnology leading to industrial and agriculture application then upbhogta shri 2008 award for applied research meeting client or consumer expectations by bharat jyoti then golden peacock eco innovation award 2008 after that the important one and which also he loves that uh, nina saxena excellence in technology award 2007 by indian institute of technology iit karakpur for novel and malarial drug plant of artemisia anva with complete technology package to improve health while enhancing rural income through value chain development i think he will be dealing with the, this part of the <coughs> his work then best uh, invention prize by all india industrial exhibition society hyderabad for r and d innovations then uh, fikki award 2004 and 5 for rural development for excellent work in rural employment and income enhancement followed by platinum jubilee lecture award in 2005 matlab prior to that uh, indian science congress at ahmedabad then uh, patent application award for us patent number 6 number such and such uh for antimicrobial composition and method for producing the same then all india biotech association award for agriculture biotechnology in 2000 then best teacher faculty award for excellence in teaching and guiding post graduate student at iri new delhi dr khanuja has i think earned he has earned fellowships 
of number of societies such as uh, National Academy of Sciences, Indian so Society for Agriculture Biochemists, Plant Tissue Culture Association of India, uh, Medicine and Aromatic Plant Society of India and others. And then his research areas are, no it is not one, they are Molecular and General Genetics, Biotechnology, Plant Genetic and Breeding and Plant Metabolomics, the latest one. And the technology side, uh, he has contributed in medicinal and aromatic plants, in natural products, botanicals, functional foods, nutraceuticals, secondary agriculture and agribusiness. Dr. Khanuja's professional contribution are milestones, quite impressive. Research publication more than 200, patent 46, book 7, monograph chapter 31, a practical manual 14, a review article 53, form and technical bulletin 28, and he was the chief editor general of the magazine. Uh, of a journal and three magazines and uh, he is a invited keynote lecture he has delivered invited keynote lecture more than 150 and uh, he is a member of 10 editorial board he has developed 38 varieties and 50 processes and technologies uh, BSHF is thankful to Dr. Khanuja for honoring his request to speak on, in brief, phytochemicals in her for health and wellness. Friends, you know phytochemicals with Dr. Khanuja will be talking about are bioactive plant compounds generally used as antimicrobial, antibacterial and anti-cancer agents and are reported to prevent cancer cardiovascular and inflammatory diseases. They are also known as nutraceuticals and cosmocuticals as well. The phytochemicals are being used for prevalent and emerging diseases as modern medicine such as artemisinin and taxol. Both are important, malaria and cancer for malaria and cancer and Dr. Khanuja, I am sure, would enrich our knowledge on modern phytochemicals. The questions, if any, can be raised in the comment or chat box, which will be answered after the talk. Now I request Dr. Khanuja to take the floor and enrich our knowledge on the subject. Dr. Khanuja, please. Thank you, Thank you uh, Dr. Brahm Singh. Uh, also, I uh, show my gratitude to the foundation, uh, BSHF, for inviting me to such an elite uh, platform to share some of the learnings that I had uh, during my uh, work as well as studies. Uh, and uh, particularly with a focus on how that can benefit the wellness and bring happiness to the society. Uh, Dr. Brahm Singh is uh, like a friend and guide both to me. Uh, we have been in touch since long. I think uh, it's almost two decades. And uh, I know him since he was director of life sciences, uh, DRDO. Uh, where we also tried to develop some of the things for high altitude uh, problems of uh, our armed forces. And then uh, even uh, with uh, Dr. Kalam, we both were, uh, you know, involved in uh, some of uh, very, very unique uh, ventures. And uh, there we, when Dr. Kalam, you know, told me once uh, that uh, Kanuja, I'm not seeing the fragrance from uh, Mughal garden, why don't you bring it in? So I said, sir, what, what exactly you mean that uh, there is no fragrance? He said, I want molecules which can be truckloads and a farm of that, biofarm of that. So 
that's where dr bram singh always uh, helped me uh, from rashtrapati bhavan because he was uh, officer on special duty there and also the scientist there so with that uh, long uh, linkage uh, we have been continuing and last month dr bram singh came to our foundation platform and delivered a very good uh, uh, talk on uh, how entrepreneurship uh, is uh, enormous from horticultural innovations and uh, today i am uh, reciprocating the same uh, and uh, i would uh, of course as uh, dr singh had desired i have uh, made that topic on phytochemicals for happiness and wellness of the society so i would be speaking on that so to begin with uh, i also thank uh, my friend shailendra rajan uh, who is uh, who has been director at lucknow cish and uh, dr pritam kalia from iari uh, whom uh, i have not known very closely but we have been uh, interacting and being iari being my own alma mater so it makes a uh, lot of sense for me so i'm going to share my uh, presentation slides with you uh, i would request uh, uh, one of you Uh, to let me know once you are able to see the slide so shalin you can just tell me once uh, those are uh, 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 visible then i will uh, start that yeah. so i'm sharing that now is it uh, visible dr rajan is visible hmm. okay yeah. okay so i hmm. move uh, forward so as uh, uh, dr bram singh has already uh, uh, told you the topic cultivating health you know when he was uh, discussing with me i thought you know what could be something which uh, really attracts everyone so i said you know everyone uh, talks of health sector in a different perspective let me say that agriculture is the base of health and that is why rather than cultivating only food let us make it cultivating health and then how do we cultivate we cultivate phytochemicals in the herbs so the herbs are identified by those molecules which are going to give you bioactivities and those bioactivities are going to help us in uh, making our a life happy and healthy by fighting against diseases or preventing the diseases so that is what i am going to cover today let me start with the the mentor that uh, i had the opportunity uh, to interact when i was a student and i always remember his statement which i have modified a bit uh, this is dr norman borlock who uh, is who was the nobel laureate we lost him in 2012 and he used to say for agricultural scientists plants do not speak they just whisper and therefore you have to be real close to them to understand them so unless and until you are close to plants you can't do research in them you cannot modify them to behave like you want them so you have to hear the whisper uh, you cannot expect that they will be speaking out and you uh, know what is to be done now from that clue i tried uh, in my lifetime to understand that whisper and today what i am going to share with you is that whisper only so that comes from that when we start thinking about plants and ourselves the difference uh, that we say is plants can photosynthesize we cannot we are mobile plants are non mobile because they are anchored in soil or pots or wherever they are and therefore sometimes we start thinking that being non mobile they are less capable than us but it's the opposite plants have the capability to respond they defend themselves they coexist with many organisms and when uh, they attract other organisms also whether it is microbes or insects or uh, many other uh, uh, including us when we see the flowers and so on or their aromas and the best part of that is that when extreme conditions come like storm comes or snowfall happens or acute heat they still have to remain in the field so they teach us that we do not run away be at your situation and defend yourself and respond properly and that is the reason that they whisper and that whisper is 
what are called as phytochemicals or the chemicals produced by the plants. One part is primary metabolism, which every one of us does, but they have a unique property of secondary metabolism, where they accumulate uh, molecules like alkaloids, terpenoids, flavonoids, glycosides, saponins, and then their uh, you know, combinations and uh, then many, many modifications happening because of the biochemical reactions. The question is that these alkaloids, terpenoids, flavonoids, glycosides, and so on, we use as medicines. And therefore, we start calling the plants as medicinal plants or aromatic plants. So is it that plants have uh, is a nature of a saint? Is it that they are selfless and that is why they produce? And are they producing for us or are they producing for animal kingdom? No, it is not like that. They produce for the first thing that I told for responding, for attracting, for uh, behaving with the environment in a very compatible way and taking every extreme on their stride. And these molecules are used by them. But humans, as always, being selfish, we isolate these molecules or we use uh, their extracts or powders containing these molecules and start using them for our liver, heart, brain, uh, lungs, diseases, and so on. So that's how they become medicinal. So when we talk of primary and secondary metabolism, what you are seeing on the left side written FD, FF, uh, new and FI, these are food, functional foods, nutraceuticals and uh, food ingredients. And secondary metabolism gives us aroma, nutraceuticals, food ingredients, and then many other uh, advantages that uh, uh, we might uh, have from them. And what you are seeing here in the pathway, the gray part is secondary metabolism and unshaded part is a primary metabolism. And this secondary metabolism is a uniqueness which gives them the advantage over the whole uh, uh, flora and fauna uh, for their capabilities to uh, be there in environment and they are never responsible for any calamities that the animal kingdom keeps uh, producing. Now, if I look at these phytochemicals which these plants uh, produce, uh, these phytochemicals, as I told you, are uh, secondary metabolites. But among them, there are many which are bioactive. That means they have activity which we use either for uh, fighting the disease or preventing the diseases or controlling the insects or pests and so on. So those bio bioactives would, uh, you know, be properly, if we want to define, are called as phytoceuticals because now they are suitics in the sense that they have activities which are useful against uh, uh, you know the problematic uh, uh, situations and if uh, we look at how they are distributed the distribution of them is that the topmost the most abundant ones are terpenoids and then come uh, your alkaloids uh, glycosides and then come the alkaloids and then the combinations so you know usually in slang people start saying plants contain alkaloids and therefore they are uh, medicinally or aromatically important. No, the major part is terpenoids followed by glycosides followed by alkaloids and their derivatives of course. So this is the story of phytoceuticals. Now from phytoceuticals come the phytopharmaceuticals. That means those which have uh, the value for of pharmaceutic uh, activity. So phytopharmaceuticals have a great scope. Now, this is a report which was uh, a decade back published and now it has become still stronger than what uh, at that time the data was. This is a report by McKinsey and company and CII. Uh, they uh, uh, came out around, uh, uh, you know, before 2010. Now, sometimes we say India is developing country and sometimes we say, no, we are developed country. Now, one of the ways you can say India is uh, developed is uh, that we are rather more developed than developed the world is that we have all those lifestyle diseases that developed countries have. And it is uh, happening more and more. For example, you have obesity, you have hypertension, you have high cholesterol level, diabetes, you know, now every third person is diabetic and many other hormonal and uh, body functioning uh, things. And this is because of nervine obesity and uh, general uh, turning of the body uh, deteriorating because of the lifestyle that we have, which is sedentary and our diet uh, becoming more and more convenient diet. And that is where what is uh, usually referred as junk food 
or fast food uh, you are eating now, i don't agree with the term junk food because either you can call it junk or food so food cannot be junk and therefore uh, i would say convenient food which has a junk element which we should eliminate and learn how to eat our food or how to cook our food or how to process our food or how to even constitute the food what i usually refer to as nutri thali nutritional thali that we must uh, uh, start understanding now on the other hand this report indicates another thing that there is uh, a category there are categories which are billion dollar category in terms of market of the ph uh, pharmaceuticals and therefore phytopharmaceuticals can jump into it and make a huge scope for the industry so these are inflammatory or immunological very recently in covid you have seen this was a big issue cardiovascular always has been heart diseases blood pressure and so on uh, metabolic and endocrinology where diabetes also comes and now with steroids use in covid again there were major problems anti infectives dr bram singh talked about the anti malarial also uh, oncology or cancer then nervous system or neurological you know depression and all those things stresses uh, that uh, the whole world is facing because of which it is falling sick and pain pain is a major category which is consequence of many things and therefore how to uh, really get rid of pain is also a very big market area so one hand it's a problem on the other hand looking positively it becomes a scope so natural products flora and fauna both whether i call plants or i call microbes uh, you know they are able to show us the way and particularly with current situation that happened very recently covid situation we talked about immunity enhancement we talked about comorbidities we are now facing post covid stresses and uh, mental or uh, you know behavioral issues metabolic status as i told you including diabetes or uh, many other syndromes are happening age related issue is also there and which has to be looked at that how we make uh, happy and healthy aging and then there are many other undefined factors so this is all where natural products of flora and fauna the phyto uh, chemicals of phytoceuticals or phytopharmaceuticals can show the way i'll show you how we can do that but then from being a molecular biologist and also uh, having worked with genomes and uh, metabolome i would like to just give you an introductory part of that that's there are around 3.5 million plants out of which we have 120 compounds pure compounds which have drug value and first drug that came out from plants is reserpin the first plant drug this is from rolfia serpent serpentina or uh, serpagandha that we call and this is for controlling your blood pressure so very good drug for the cardiovascular uh, management now considering from genome point of view there are around 50000 genes at that time we had been expecting which came down to something like 30 to 40000 uh, uh, genes but the compounds which have been uh, in uh, beginning of this millennium anticipated were 200000 or 2 lakh and today we have already crossed that and actually what we are expecting is a million compounds which are possible now how can it happen that only 30 to 40000 genes and so many compounds now that is what we are uh, going to also go through when we talk about it and uh, that is uh, where there are many uh, reactions biochemical reactions and metabolic uh, uh, changes that happen and you get more and more compounds possible and uh, uh, that is how once we start learning about these compounds and bioactives and their bioactivity is established and you have clinical data uh, ready with you alkaloids phenolic terpenoids and these categories which i told you through process technology can give you the products and these are the drugs which slowly will be uh, dominating the market currently i can say that it is not dominating because of uh, uh, lack of uh, the clinical data uh, on all of them although you have laboratory data so once that starts coming in and uh, we are already seeing if i uh, go back from 96 to today uh, i have seen so many molecules which were in hibernation have come out as drugs on chemical uh, chemist shops one of the examples which dr bram singh was uh, indicating artemisia anua is a herb the chinese herb but we dominated on it we produced more artemisinin by playing with the metabolism of the plant uh, 
through selections and uh, molecular breeding and we were able to produce artemisinin in such amount that it becomes a viable uh, answer for anti malarial uh, drug and artemisinin then is converted semi uh, you know derivatized through chemical process into rt ether rt mether rt sunate rt linate and so on depending on what exactly you want so rt ether uh, became the drug first drug uh, came out to the chemist shop by the name emal eradicate malaria and that is a work done by cmap and cdri together uh, both csir labs and uh, you know translated into uh, real help of the society now uh, this is uh, produced in india from the plants derivatized and made into drug format and exported to more than 42 countries and uh, in return the technology providers the institutions get royalty for that which again runs into crores and therefore you can further further fund the projects and also make the scientists feel proud and happy with the bonus that they can get so it's a win win situation i go back to the metabolism and take first category which is i will not be talking about all categories so i thought i'll take the best example and it is terpenoids which are the most abundant but terpenoids uh, have a hierarchy so there are isoprene molecules which are c5 five carbon atom moieties they uh, dimerize and give you monoterpenes these are c10 and then monoterpenes can give you diterpenes triterpenes tetraterpenes 20 30 40 and also in between like sesquiterpenes is c15 15 carbon uh, moieties and so on and uh, artemisinin which i was telling you belongs to sesquiterpene category only now what i want to show you here is that if you look at the right side the species the plant species that i have shown produce these uh, molecules from this hierarchy they do not follow the botanical taxonomic uh, classification rules they are mixed up now here now that tells if you are a phytoceutical researcher or biotechnology you want to use here is an opportunity that you can forget what can sexually be hybridized and make uh, uh, the genes give you those molecules you could even make formulation considering these metabolic columns of these plants and create the drugs so this path of the plant i would i usually give this statement path through pathways the phytoceutical reserve you can harvest when you follow this path through the pathways i'll show you what now above the red line what you are seeing is the primary metabolism it is branching out into secondary metabolism and i showed you example of uh, isoprenoids and isoprenes uh, and uh, you know you can see in dark red boxes here terpenoids polyketides alkaloids and phenylpropanoids from there you can have further uh, you know uh, chemical uh, transformations and you get monoterpenoids sesquiterpenoids and so on from terpenoid category similarly from alkaloid you have uh, so many categories of alkaloids and phenylpropanoid you know nowadays we talk of the colors in plants and colors then as soon as you see color or pigment you start talking of antioxidants and antioxidant can take care of so many things including your kava and all those things you are talking of or the berries that become so popular for health uh, thing so that they uh, do the scavenging of free uh, radicals free uh, superoxide radicals so all those things are possible from shift from the primary metabolism to this secondary metabolism it is just like underground below the red uh, uh, a line that i have shown here and that shows how diversity in plants is happening and then further uh, biochemical reactions like methylation glycosylation oxidation reduction acetylation uh, carboxylation and so on gives them you know so you have hundreds hundreds become thousand thousand become lakhs lakhs become millions so that's how this is happening and then there are uh, junction points like you see in railway uh, uh, total network the junctions where you could uh, go from one place to another place and then also divert yourself so ferenyl pyrophosphate geranyl pyrophosphate squalene and geranyl geranyl pyrophosphate if you remember these four then you will be able to reach everything so ferenyl pyrophosphate can give you artemisinin like molecules geranyl pyrophosphate can give you all aromas that you get the smell fragrance flavors and so on squalenes can give you steroids and uh, triterpenoids and geranyl geranyl py uh, pyrophosphate can give you steviocide, gensinocide 
and even you know what you call as beta carotene and things like that now taking example of strictocidine just see look at the, the huge strength of alkaloids you can produce once you have reached this so pathway when you are looking now from pathway to steps and every step has a gene involved as uh, the source of the enzymes that convert one precursors into another form or intermediate form or final form and you can get reserpine you can get uh, uh, other molecules like uh, uh, alstonine or uh, yumbine or you know uh, whatever windolin and catherinthin uh, vincrastin vinblastin and so on anti cancer molecules you have uh, now here molecules you have for cardiovascular system and so on so more than 3000 alkaloids and their variants are today uh, possible through this uh, route and similarly reticulin can give you narcotin thebane codeine you must be knowing morphine and uh, those things which are uh, which also fall under narcotic category but the ultimate thing when we are talking of pain therapy you have to operate a patient where there could be lot of pain morphine is ultimate thing and then it's uh, relatives codeine thebane which are non narcotic and can also give you those type of uh, bioactivities so this just, just this uh, network path through pathways this network or web what we would like to call i like to take you now to hear the whisper again and that whisper we have to make audible to the society and that's what i call as cultivate health cultivate health in farms then farm to pharma so change the spelling of farming from f a r m i n g to p h a r m i n g and you are doing literal health sector emanating from agriculture so every farmer can be a health sector uh, source and there are examples of uh, farming one is artemisia which we uh, just have discussed so i'll not go into details of that so you can manage the health prevent the diseases you can produce entrepreneurial opportunities by farming to farming enhance income not doubling the income you can multiply the income manifold and then it also has eco agriculture that is economic and ecological impacts so i always refer you know rather than the terminology is today getting popular eco agriculture which is going to be the future now coming to plant farming which i just uh, indicated let us take one of the most serious and most promising serious in the sense that it causes all health hazards and promising in the sense that since you need solution for that every molecule that deals with it is going to be a billion dollar category and that is obesity so how do we manage obesity and what can obesity lead to obesity can lead to high blood pressure diabetes abnormal blood fats coronary artery disease stroke osteoarthritis sleep problems cancer and so on so this has to be dealt do we have molecules which will deal with obesity that means not only reducing the weight people sometimes confuse that weight management is obesity management no even your chemistry inside the blood the thickness uh, in terms of uh, the components of the fatty acids and we talk about triglycerides and uh, uh, other molecules the cholesterol you know ldl hdl and vldl so hdl has to be more in amount and ldl and vldl have to be low triglycerides should be within the range because otherwise also they are important for defense but then when they are abundant then they start killing your heart so how do we do that i just take very very small group of examples for each category uh, but this is not the exhaustive list this is just indicative list and there are uh, dozens and dozens of other plants also so red apple is a very good example because of the pyruvate garcinia kokum you might have heard hydroxytric acid or hca which uh, can help you in reducing cholesterol and even weight management or t camellia chinensis it has uh, caffeine and flavonoids and the most sold raw herbal drug in the world is your lassun garlic allium sativum now that is something which uh, if you have in raw form in your diet whether you make a pickle out of it or something don't fry it then you get lot of advantage and you can start seeing the advantage both in terms of balancing of your cholesterol chemical biochemistry as well as uh, the weight and now we look at what are the molecules that will be important for obesity management 
very simple ascorbic acid citric acid and beta carotene these three are the major categories and look at the plants that you have so as i told you i have given you four examples but then you have a huge list of plants giving you such molecules and just bringing them into either the industrial cycle or into your nutri thali can make a big difference to deal with the obesity and amla as you all know richest source of uh, uh, vitamin c and uh, therefore uh, it uh, must remain as a part of uh, what formulations we make what nutraceuticals or functional foods we make or what diet we have when we are talking of obesity management then talking about another very serious issue is uh, diabetes how do we manage diabetes through herbals you know i am not in favor of saying that once you have diabetes you uh, would get drugs which will be uh, killing diabetes but what i am saying is that you could prevent it and also you could be managing that with the involvement of uh, certain uh, sources right into your diet i am not talking of drugs produced from that so bitter gourd or karela its seed extract has a protein which is called p insulin it is insulin like uh, hypoglycemic protein so once that uh, p insulin is available then your uh, total management of uh, rising sugar in the blood is controlled and then also it has triterpenoids which uh, really uh, are able to help your pancreas uh, to uh, produce the right amount of uh, uh, insulin if you take it in right amount and also please remember when we say plants or herbals it is not that uh, once you know that bitter gourd is good so you start eating bitter gourd in every diet and a large amount of it every drug has a dosage and toxicity effect and therefore it should remain within the limits only or you have iv gourd uh, permal family uh, you have uh, stevia which is the you know 150 times sweeter than the sugar and therefore uh, you know when you don't have to take sugar added sugar you could take this for sweetening and you know the products have already come out or gymnema sylvestris this is uh, what produces gymnema saponins and out of that gymnemic acids triterpenoid saponins in addition to flavonols and good marin they are helping your metabolism to uh, again react to the added sugar or the sugar once the level starts going up but the other advantage which works more efficiently is that once you take the uh, the uh, gymnemic acid the uh, extracts or even the leaves of this plant your tongue now forgets uh, for for a very tr small transit forget the taste of sweetness and therefore everything uh, uh, you know whether sweet or salty you are not able to differentiate so people take this so that you know they have although a, uh, a feeling to take more sugar but once they have uh, this then they don't like necessarily the sweet things and they can take other things also and one of uh, the plants uh, on which i have worked in great depth is uh, trigonella that is methi which produces alkal alkaloids trigonelline and choline in addition to that it produces a mucilage that is uh, basically galactomannins uh, which come out in form of uh, uh, a jelly substance if you soak these seeds and that is a physical barrier to the absorption of sugar so what it means is sugar as well as fat so if you have taken this gel into your diet then uh, uh, if you even take more uh, sugary thing the sugar will not uh, get absorbed into your gut rather it will uh, gel with the gel that it this has produced and it will be excreted so those who are have diabetes and go to a dawat or party and eat uh, more of uh, uh, on that day something which is sugary then must consume trigonella trigonella or methi seeds after soaking overnight then the brain health nervine tonics because as i said uh, stress and uh, uh, you know brain health are becoming very important again i have taken only four examples with the diversity of modes of action bacopa monnieri which is good for memory uh, that is also called brahmi it produces triterpenoid saponins acorus or vach that produces phenylpropanoids its roots and nilambo or kamal what you have it produces alkaloids and centella asiatica mandukparni uh, which again produces triterpenoid saponin so you have uh, bacosides you have asiaticosides and uh, so on so this of course uh, does not give you an example where you start eating them directly you have to follow the uh, processing route and then only you should eat otherwise they can 
also have toxic effect although uh, some of them have history of being consumed in foods like uh, centella in uh, uh, west bengal and even rami in some of the eastern areas in chutney form and so on but follow uh, very precisely the maximum limits of that so you know how much uh, how much is too much is uh, the uh, the the barrier that you must always keep in mind then as uh, we uh, began and dr brahm singh talked about that anti cancer uh, again plants can give you molecules and you have so many sources of them some of those where we have worked intensively and extensively are catharanthus at the bottom what you are seeing and texas valisiana taxol for uh, you know uh, uh, the breast cancer as well as uh, uh, ovarian cancer and catharanthus also Uh, produces wind crystal and wind blast in which are very good uh, molecules and then their derivatization can give you uh, hyper activity as well as uh, low dosage requirements so therefore the side effects of toxicity will be low as you know that anti cancer drugs they are basically cytotoxic that is how they act they kill the cells uh, you are selectively trying to kill the cancer cells and therefore uh, you know there are enormous opportunities here with such uh, Uh, examples and then there are lists which are expanding now from this i come to now prevention right so you can cure you can uh, have molecules which can take care of the diseases but then prevention is always better than cure and therefore i come to nutraceuticals and functional foods and it brings me to frontier bio horticulture i'm sure dr brahm singh will feel happy by seeing this and so would dr rajan and uh, dr kalia because this is their field and uh, i'm talking of the molecules there which are not only giving you diet or filling your hunger but also going to help you in maintaining a very good health and feel happy and this is mediterranean diet which we uh, usually hear and uh, you know it says that if you are regularly taking mediterranean diet then this can do the cholesterol lowering and therefore all uh, your cardiovascular problems can be solved not only that even as you know that uh, with cholesterol and uh, weight uh, diabetes is also related and therefore these diets will help that so i would say metabolic disorders can be dealt with such diets and just look at this uh, famous uh, uh, picture of the mediterranean diet what is this this is your eggplant or bangan and then on top of that you have uh, some of the pigmented things including beans and carrots and tomatoes and uh, uh, broccoli and uh, cauliflower and so on what is that we don't have even spices so if we want indian diet can become much better than mediterranean diet in taking care of uh, uh, or uh, preventing the disease as well as uh, you know augmenting them so we did publish this in uh, 2011 uh, in a book horticulture to horti business it was a consequence of uh, the indian horticulture congress that was held uh, and uh, dr k l chadda was uh, the organizer of that so he insisted that i must prepare this and then uh, give to the audience what bio horticulture can offer so this is available any one of you would be interested in getting this article can write to me i will send the pdf of uh, this uh, article i come to biotechnology as uh, i you were told that i i am basically a geneticist and uh, uh, have been in biotechnology for uh, decades and therefore this research becomes very very important issue as far as nutraceuticals are concerned it's a nobel prize winning research for trichus and bayer who produce golden rice golden rice was which had more beta carotene that is precursor of vitamin a in addition to being Uh, an anti scavenging or anti obesity uh, element and this was done through genetic engineering by incorporating uh, three genes and creating a pathway so it had geranyl geranyl pyrophosphate which i told you as a junction point from there by adding uh, phytoin synthase and uh, lycopene cyclase from daffodil and uh, uh, crt1 from a bacteria ervinia and uh, you got uh, golden rice which started producing beta carotene otherwise it was white but the problem at that time which they faced was that the beta carotene was of the level that you will have to eat in kilograms rice to get your beta carotene requirement but then under hyper expression promoters this was expressed and therefore it comes to 100 grams or so 
but the problem is that gm remains gm gm and it will always be a controversy let's hope that people get uh, uh, get uh, the sense of understanding biology and genetics and know that there is nothing wrong in uh, genetic engineering when it is the genes from uh, plants and uh, you know the companion sources only which otherwise go into our food but anyway we can uh, wait till that time and go for horticultural rice or horti rice that means what this is producing we can also produce by cooking the rice with tomato or moringa and so on so moringa or uh, you know sajan moringa olifera produces beta carotene uh, many times of the carrots so that means if you are comparing 1 kg of carrots 32 grams of uh, moringa can produce that much of beta carotene and that beta carotene is more uh, so, uh, stable also that's why you know uh, in eastern india we have rice uh, boiled rice and then uh, it is steamed with moringa and they eat it or moringa leaves go into many other form also into their diet so therefore let us start formulating our food such that it gives us those uh, 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 elements or supplements which otherwise we don't uh, get from normal food now here is something which came from uh, not from india from out but uh, now today as you know uh, horticultural uh, capabilities have made it as as good as gobi or uh, cauliflower and uh, it has a a huge advantage of sulforaphane which can detoxify chemical carcinogens now you know when we talk about the pollutants in the water and soil and then you are getting cancer because of that now such molecules can prevent that this is called chemo prevention so uh, you can uh, start extrapolating from this this opens up research fields also beta carotene i told you carrots have it moringa right side what you are seeing and uh, hybrid uh, this uh, gm rice so perhaps sources like moringa offer you non gm sources also till you get the gm uh, you know acceptable uh in addition to that moringa i am a fan of this uh, plant it's called uh, its uh, pods are called uh, drumsticks and those drumsticks you know are used in sambar or many soups and so on and one of my student did uh, phd and uh, could we could reach a molecule called niaziridin on which uh, cmap has a patent also and it acts in a different way it is a bio enhancer and that bio enhancer enhances the drug activity of other drugs for example here what i am showing you is bio enhancer molecule niaziridin is helping rifampicin in killing action so less dosage almost 1/10 dosage of uh, rifampicin is able to work with same efficiency when you have niaziridin with it and niaziridin itself is not uh, killing any bacteria so it doesn't have drug action but it enhances drug so we also looked at what does it do does it uh, do bioavailability enhancement so what you are seeing in youtube uh, you know rifampicin alone and rifampicin with the this niaziridin uh, the recipient tube through the gut membrane which is there between these two tubes we find that if we look at the kinetics the more and more rifampicin is uh, transmitted through this membrane that means absorption in gut also increases that is bioavailability enhancement so one is bioactivity enhancement other is bioavailability enhancement so these are the wonders that bio enhancers can do and uh, putting uh, uh, drumsticks into your dal or sambar that uh, we also did some of those uh, things with vitamins and minerals it enhances the availability of those also so that means the soup that you make with drumstick is going to enhance the availability of nutritious elements Uh, there are these uh, these are popular article things uh, which uh, tell compare that how much vitamin a or carotene vitamin c calcium potassium iron uh, protein and vitamin e uh, moringa has compared with their standard sources so everything is multiple times of uh, uh, that for example calcium four times of milk uh, vitamin a i already told you vitamin c is seven times so it also adds to your taste value so don't forget moringa into your diet uh, although tomato is uh, something which horticulture people would uh, be talking about either as salad or uh, as a sabji or vegetable but i am looking at the lycopene which uh, which works in not only toning up your body but again chemo prevention for prostate cancer 
and also uh, immunity enhancement so that is uh, the beauty of tomato and therefore i consider tomato from herbal angle and these molecules are very very uh, important and vitamin c double rich uh, varieties that they are uh, making much of uh, the vitamin c and also vitamin a and uh, not only that you have now possibilities of uh, manipulating with these pigments in tomato and can uh, as i told you from the junction point produce even many other molecules so tomato is a very good material to be a herbal of medicinal value and punica granitum that is uh, your uh, anar or pomegranate uh, there are many advantages of that and one of the things that i always observe is that uh, the the uh, uh, the molecules in this particularly if we are talking of uh, elaki tannins or elagic acid um, uh, derivatives and catechins that you get in tea they are much much more here so i always ask uh, some of the tea formulators that don't why don't you make an rt you know from africa you get uh, hibiscus subdarifa tea this tea will be much better than that and it will be rejuvenating and i think all researchers or knowledge workers deserve to have that tea in addition to those who are need for stamina capsicum you see from the angle of spice uh, mostly but also it has two molecules capsaicin and capsaicin capsaicin is the pungency factor and capsaicin is a pigment and therefore capsicum uh, two of my students did uh, phd's on that and uh, you know you can segregate the populations or you can create the genotypes which produce red chilies but no pungency and you can produce non red chilies with high pungency that means these uh, pathways are getting diverted and you can segregate them and therefore one can go into food pigment categories and many other pigment uh, usage and capsaicin goes into real pharmaceutical use not only pungency or spice value but also for fat metabolism now it is coming up in a big way and then you get gels for pain therapy you must have seen many capsicum based uh, gels because of capsaicin or rather i can say that after uh, morphine the best pain killer is going to be capsaicin only and it is uh, showing its uh, advantage and then uh, for treatment of psoriasis the uh, creams are coming up which are very good so i think capsicum from my angle is a reservoir of phytomolecules which can help us in those uh, diseases which are the root cause of many other diseases i bring you to another uh, connection that is gut brain connection now our gut contains lot of microorganisms that we usually now what is know as uh, probiotics that also we consume sometimes now the population of uh, these beneficial microbes which colonize our gut determines how we are going to behave you know they talk of uh, good people and bad people i would say that good people are those who have good uh, microbes in their gut and bad people are those who don't have those good ones and uh, these good uh, microbes they are around 167 species and if i go by weight each one of us carries in its uh, gut 1.5 to 1.75 kg of uh, the cells of microbes and on the other hand if i go by the total cell population that we have so if uh, i am uh, uh, counting myself as a pool of uh, cells then it is 100 trillion cells and out of those 100 trillion cells my own uh, khanuja's uh, or suman's uh, cells are only 10 trillion 90 trillion are microbes that i have in me therefore my behavior is going to depend on 90% of what i have in form of cells and metabolism metabolism they are determining rather than me only and there that is why the total genome of the humans is known but still you are not able to control everything because you have to relate it with the microbiota microbiome that lives within you and uh, therefore it gives you probiotic uh, advantage as uh, the health agents so if you have probiotics like bifidobacterium or lactobacilli Uh, you can uh, literally be taking care of many many prevention of many infections and also metabolic uh, disorders and to help probiotics to work in your gut you need also something that is diet for probiotics that is called prebiotics or something that we do not digest but they can use as carbon source otherwise what happens is we take our diet 
we take probiotics and we start competing with them for our nutrition and they are excreted in the morning but if you also have prebiotics like uh, you know some of the oligosaccharides or soluble fiber what we call then you are going to provide a food for pre probiotics and also the bowel movement of uh, your gut is going to be very good you won't have constipation you won't have any problems related with the post digestion uh, phase and there are sources for prebiotics like fenugreek i told you that mucilaginous thing that comes out chia is another thing which uh, came from out but uh, uh, you know india is not an issue where you cannot do if we can do artemisia we can do chia much better soya bean onion garlic oats oats you must have seen when you put in milk or water it also uh, gives you you know beta glucans which give you that mucilaginous thing and uh, so on so bringing these into our nutri thali uh, is not going to be tough the only thing is we have to understand how to do it and that's what uh, the foundation that i am uh, basically steering flora fauna science foundation all my uh, colleagues members they are helping uh, common masses to understand through radio mass media and also many of the webinars i give you this example chia you have chia seeds you soak them overnight or even for 3 4 hours it becomes a pudding if you put it into milk and that pudding what you seeing on the right side with jelly like uh, nature that is a prebiotic coming out of that so you have with chia many advantages one is the prebiotic advantage which i am talking here which will help your uh, probiotics or microbiota to colonize in your gut but then also it has another advantage which you are seeing in the green bar here it its seed is rich in oil and oil is rich in omega 3 fatty acids that means uh, ala uh, particularly now this omega 3 source is fish oil and here is a vegetarian source like you also might have heard about flax the chia is much uh, tastier than that and much uh, it's not that dry which causes constipation so it doesn't cause constipation so uh, omega 3 fatty acid ala form ala is converted in our body into epa and epa into dha that goes uh, for you know all the advantages for brain to cardiovascular system so uh, that's what uh, you could be uh, uh, bringing into your diet so omega-3 fatty acids are not only in chia also flax as i told you and even soya so soya oil has one uh, of these advantages of course there is a uh, bottleneck the bottleneck is that since this is ala and it has to be converted through two steps into dha which ultimately is of use you also have plants lower plants that is microalgae which can produce dha in fact, we should understand how do fishes have DHA or omega-3 uh, source. It is not that they produce it. It is because they eat the microalgae in their habitat in the water bodies. And therefore, microalgae again belong to our plant category and therefore are source of the phytomolecules that we are looking at. Now, looking from a superficial angle. Superficial angle means uh, we are now uh, looking at wellness. Uh, not at molecular level, but at product level. So you have opportunities of wellness in herbal world market and particularly India and Southeast Asia, aromatherapy, aroma sprays, body bath, bulk herbs, on the other hand, facial care or uh, teas or hair care and herbal extracts. So you all must have been hearing about these and these are uh, how they are produced and exported or imported like aromatherapy things are essential oils, oil blends, resins, diffusers, nebulizers, burners, and so on. Body and bath spas are using them, aroma sprays, flower waters, you know, people are using for cosmetics as well as general skin care. Bulk herbs, which are a major source, as I told about this metabolome and the molecules from them, and bulk ingredients like aloe vera gel, apricot uh, meal, arrowroot powder, or uh, buckwheat hulls, and so on and then you have bulk oils <clears throat> which are very useful uh, each one here i have listed is having a value single half capsules combination capsules freeze dried capsules and so on i'm going very fast through these uh, but anyone interested in knowing uh, this list i can send to them and then these herbal extracts in fact what i will do is i will share the pdf of this uh, presentation with dr bram singh and anyone approaching uh, this foundation also would get this uh, uh, presentation. 
and uh, herbal extracts syrup and glycerides you know they are very important it is made in glycerin and therefore shelf life is very high so many many molecules go there and then incense sticks agarbatti resins candles you know which change your life uh, feeling your mood modifiers and so on and then hair care uh, going into shampoos and uh, you know hair bath uh, things and facial care going up to uh, you know face mask and all those things i come to the final part that is phenyl propanoid uh, before i enter into some unique things and phenyl propanoid as i told you the colors of the plants which attract you and those colors are important for immunity prevention of many diseases infections as well as uh, facilitation of uh, many molecules so there could be simple phenyl propanoids lignans flavonoids and tannins and this is a very interesting article those who are into research must read it see the title at the bottom right flavonoid biosynthesis a colorful model of genetics biochemistry cell biology and biotechnology so that's what it tells about colors you know how those pathways are working and most interestingly all plants have this pathway the only thing is we have to do the genetics and breeding such that you can divert it towards selection of those for in which you are interested and all uh, can be uh, converted into the herbals now we talk of again making happy so sweetness makes us happy and plants have that i talked about uh, stevia it is 150 times sweeter than sugar and when you mix it with sugar it is almost 250 times sweeter so you can reduce the sugar intake or you can prevent the sugar intake so you can replace that you have glycerisa glabra or muleti which uh, its roots have uh, glycerisin and uh, glycy glyceritic acid the saponins and triterpenes and uh, you know it's also called licorice Uh, again our research uh, at cmap one of my student did and we found this with bioenhancing activity in addition to expectorant this also gives you a sweetness uh, uh, possibility then flavors because we eat food when only only when it is uh, flavorful and uh, not only flavors the plants contain the molecules which we call as aroma can be also aromaceuticals that's the future of industry in the making that you could be doing through nasal route and uh, or vapor route and so on so those things are possible spices you know preservatives you know are uh, the uh, result of these aromatic uh, pathway only just to tell you that you know this uh, this also got a nobel prize this uh, finding uh, which tells that we can uh, each one of us can remember 10000 uh, different orders in our brain can store that so like you know you say this is rose like smell coming this is kerosene like smell coming all these are your reserve in your hard disk of the brain which you gained only by smelling through the receptors from your nose and most interestingly you have thousand different genes uh, which are responsible for these receptors and therefore around thousand uh, receptors you have and thousand receptors in 2000 makes you 10000 or more uh, possibilities of uh, Uh, the combination but then uh, you can remember maximum of 10000 so that is what tells that how we can change even the mood of uh, the people and aroma therapy is a consequence of that so i say sensing aroma or sense of living you know like you have art of living you have also sense of living the aromas can give you that uh, so menthol vences gives you one aroma that is menthol uh, cmap did a huge amount of work and we became world leaders again beating uh, china in our uh, uh, economics of production of menthol we are leaders of uh, mentha uh, mentha spiketa is spearmint which gives you carbon uh, type of molecule grape water and things like that have this and then mentha piperita or peppermint which goes into edible formats uh, like tea and other things and then ginger which is uh, you know part of our spice and but it is also a very good molecule which is anti inflammatory or analgesic activity and cmap has a patent on that and in fact uh, there are products also which came out uh, from this uh, and in fact you know when i was talking about my association with dr brahm singh i also talked about that we jointly worked with dr kalam he was very fond of uh, that biodiversity in ginger northeast versus north india south india and so on so we did work on that once uh, we interacted with him and ajwain uh, cmap again has uh, patents on that for fighting against multi drug resistance uh, and also you know it's uh, 
value in digestive system it's a stimulant and it's anti spasmodic uh, carminative uh, and also takes care of your uh, uh, fat uh, management osimum or tulsi family basil <coughs> is there tulsi is there krishna tulsi or sham tulsi is there and you have molecules like uh, carvacrol and eugenol which uh, really are important but then there are many other molecules like 13 cineol and so so the only thing i want to tell the viewers is that don't drink tulsi unlimited it can abrase your epithelial membrane of your esophagus or uh, your your gut so take it in limited quantity then it is beneficial when you take it too much or every tea that you take it is, is tulsi tea then you will have problems so ultimate uh, uh, thinking i want to give to you is those who think they have no time for healthy eating will sooner or later have find to have to find time for illness no you have to choose you want healthy eating or you want to fight illness and that is what functional foods or nutraceuticals are there and these are from plant sources only uh, the metabolome that i talked about this was published uh, by national academy of sciences after uh, its uh, annual convention where i had presented also this and this paper is also will give you very good idea that how we can be doing more research into metabolome or biochemical pathways and uh, the molecules which are phytoceuticals or phytochemicals so i give the statement from uh, uh, three idiots all is uh, well uh, or all will be well all will be well when understood well and applied well i uh, thank uh, my biggest team of cmap which was around 600 people 450 uh, staff and uh, 150 students who always were with me and we uh, pledged to work on the green path for better health and life and that's how we have uh, uh, you know reached this stage of sharing knowledge with everyone and then many of the things which i have followed i in fact had not super innovated from my services i took voluntary retirement at the age of 49 so now i have reached the stage of uh, super innovation so uh, in the meantime i thought let me make use of 10 to 12 years to create another niche which will be for entrepreneurs and uh, industry because i always felt that science has to be translated into uh, benefit of society and that can happen only through Uh, industry and employment generation through entrepreneurship and that's where flora fauna science foundation came into being and we uh, have adopted villages but on the other hand i also established one incubator called skies india which is suman kanuja innovations for enterprises uh, where this team what you are seeing at the bottom right is my students who are scientists or researchers or even director level people so they all are always uh, with us virtually and also actually whenever they are uh, needed Uh, my uh, actual introduction would be this rather than uh, you know talking of awards and other things this is what i am doing and i am loving it i feel that uh, i did the right thing in 2008 when i was not even 50 i took retirement and i could uh, really follow my passion and it's paying and it's not that when you follow your passion you become economically weaker i my interaction my work with industry gives me Uh, advantage of uh, finances also and with kisan or farmers or students i never charge and therefore i am able to feel happy by imparting what they should know and then we change uh, the world that is what is our aim we have talked about krishi se khushi as our annual uh, theme uh, for flora fauna science foundation and overall vision uh, which will lead to prasanna bharat you know we talk about uh, many definitions what should india be so our vision is it should be prasanna bharat everyone should be happy no diseases no economic pressures and also no stresses so if that happens this will happen only when we can economically and uh, health wise improve uh, the status and for that we have these two uh, platforms which i created skies india incubator where i guide students and uh, entrepreneurs and food innovations that is a platform for industry to make products or take leads or license uh, uh, technologies so i thank you for uh, being with me i have taken a bit more time but uh, i thought you know let me complete uh, my sentences so that they start uh, making sense so here you have my email id those of you who would like to interact with me can note it down the websites are also given where i uh, 
uh, I'm involved and uh, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khanuja. You have yeah. taken yeah. in the horticultural world which uh, protect, feed and uh, provide uh, immunity and whatnot to the human being. I never knew, though I am a student of horticulture, that horticulture is that important. I could know <laughs> through your talk that it's really <laughs> very important and it's remain unexploited and uh, not understood or is not uh, revealed, whatever. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Shalain Rajanji just to highlight the few points of uh, Dr. <coughs> Kanuja's talk. Though there are so many. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, <coughs> so, uh, <laughs> we had an uh, exceptionally excellent uh, talk. That is a talk uh, which were, we were waiting for that. And we could know many things which we were not uh, aware of. And most of those things, is starting from the cultivating health through the phytochemicals uh, in herbs, then wellness, he has beautifully introduced many of the concepts which are uh, not so uh, intelligently or uh, interestingly explained by the scientists. And the molecules, how those are important, the metabolism, how it is important and uh, the bioactive and phytochemicals, what their role and phyto, uh, he has given some uh, many of the terms uh, like nutrithali, which is uh, important for us. And that's why the nutrithali has uh, several components from the horticulture field. The concept of nutrithali, then uh, drug therapeutics, then he has given several areas where the products uh, are being uh, important from the plants and the preventive uh, health care, which is uh, important as far as uh, his view and the products as a drugs, which have a scope uh, for the commercial uh, venture. He has also given examples for that. Then the Artemisia example, how the manipulation in that uh, plant has yielded better drug and uh, the importance of several of the terpenes and their categories. And he explained how these basic molecules, molecules are, important are important and the pathways and, and, pathways and providing and numerous compounds. So uh, how to cultivate health in farms? This has been presented by him and the farming way, PHAR farming way. Uh, is an example of that. Then uh, many of the examples were there related with the molecules which can be uh, managed and uh, those are useful for managing the uh, obesity, then uh, your diabetes and simple uh, herbs like red apple, garcinia tea, garlic, and these can help us. How, uh, what is the extent he has given example of that? How ascorbic acid, citric acid, uh, beta carotene are important then for diabetes, how several herbs are uh, able to manage it, several sweeteners he has given how to intelligently use those and he has cautioned about the avoiding excess use of the herbs also. So, but uh, uh, we had a very good uh, example of uh, some of the uh, <coughs> having the uh, mechanism how the diabetes can be controlled and uh, manage it, managed and the example of methi, the practical examples he has given, the scientific basis of it, and several of the tonics uh, which can be uh, utilized by their, their importance in processing. Those are nearant uh, tonics, then anti-carcinogenic uh, compounds, how those are important, and uh, their excessive use, cytotoxicity caused by those that has he has cautioned. Then prevention is the better than uh, uh, it, he, has, he has already given and the frontiers in bio horticulture um, he has given the example of Mediterranean diet examples where the stuffed uh, egg, apple, uh, egg plant uh, example was important and how the Indians can convert this uh, according to our uh, <coughs> meal interest so the how the golden rice example can be leading to the hearty rice or the cooking together different types of uh, uh, these uh, herbs which are rich in uh, very many or many uh, phytochemicals the example of moringa then broccoli this has given us uh, several ideas 
and how those can be utilized for uh, in making our diet important. Lycopene in tomato, that example has been given, but the example of the then uh, the guava, lycopene has he has missed, but the guava is also rated as a one of the most important uh, lycopene source after the muskmel, uh, this uh, uh, the watermelon. Then elagic acid importance and its derivatives and how the tea is in uh, the flower tea is important in pomegranate he has given then the flowers are now being used in as he has already suggested the flowers of pomegranate are used for tea because they are rich in elagic acid and uh, the pungency of the tea uh, this uh, chili how it is uh, uh, independent from the pigmentation pathway he has given example then again the gut brain connection that was the classical example where how the microbiota is important, how the prebiotics, probiotics are important. So a lot many things we could learn from him. He's a beautiful presentation in a very, very simple way. And the advantages of the chia seed and uh, this omega-3 fatty acids, how those are important for us. And from the way uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, plants, we can get it. So the colorful model, the paper he has given for that, that is example, is already that the color for food is always good for all of us. And the role of aromatic plants, he has given, given example of mentha and other plants. And that is, so a long list of herbs and uh, plants he has given. And uh, we, were, we are thankful to him for the uh, very, very important, uh, his contribution also. We are thankful he, for sharing his contribution in the this field and his great contribution is that uh, he has made all these things common to the students as he said the farmers and people are coming up with a, as a entrepreneur or the students are coming as a having the uh, establishing industry so we all are thankful to dr kanuja for sharing this important knowledge thank you very much <coughs> thank you dr rajan so now we have come to the <coughs> Uh, now wrapping up of the talk, I don't know from where to start and from and where to end. Uh, so much Dr. Khanuja has talked and all are important, all are important. And uh, I think I'm the happiest person to attend his talk because he talked uh, that he has made the horticulture uh, guys as uh, uh, physicians or doctors or uh, medical practitioners and whatnot. Uh, uh, if you want to have the solution of certain uh, rather important problems, you go to the horticulture produce. Uh, that is why he said cultivating the health. So cultivating health with horticulture. Uh, so what examples he have given? He have given mentioned the wonder plants. He mentioned only one wonder plant. Uh, uh, that is Moringa. There are a number of them in horticulture. The fellow with which I am familiar with and played with it, uh, that uh, Seabuck Thorn, competes with Moringa in most of the respect. Amla, Daksab has had the richest source of vitamin C, but uh, uh, this fellow uh, um, Seabuck Thorn exceeds that, has got much more than that. So, uh, horticulture is a I don't know what term should be used. Uh, see, we human beings, our food can be managed with horticulture things. And without horticulture, you can't be healthy. I can say with the guarantee. Without horticulture produce, if somebody thinks that uh, we can maintain a good health, uh, I, I think this is impossible. Uh, not possible. You have to go to the horticulture route. And if you go in a better way, in a scientific way, after reading the things and attending the lecture of <coughs> Dr. Khanuja and the work of his foundation and all that, you will be happy. You need not to bother the physician, doctor, and visit the hospitals. You can manage yourself. He has given examples of so many the horticulture crops, but miss the turmeric. Turmeric, wonder plant. As good. They have worked on that or some other institute has worked uh, uh, want that and uh, see the things like uh, bitter gourd and uh, fenugreek we use left and right and we don't know uh, how much that um, good thing we are getting it 
the uh, most important aspect of Dr. Khanuja talk is he knows the subject and not only so many people know the subject. He can make the others to understand the subject in a very simple way. Whether one has got that background of uh, the chemistry, uh, horticulture or something else, the genetics, plant breeding. But uh, his uh, lecture can be understood that uh, he has got a knack of that or God gift. And I don't know what herb he is using for that, uh, that uh, <coughs> he may be knowing it. He may not like to disclose that. Uh, but uh, <coughs> he has got that one. At least I'm impressed. Yeah, and I'm sure the listeners and those who will listen later, they, his uh, uh, talk will be available on that YouTube and uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm sure this talk will, after some time, we will see there are so many reads, etc. are there because uh, it contains uh, uh, most of the, I think, uh, the, the, the modern problems he had touched upon. Malaria, diabetes, obesity. Uh, number of the, the things everybody is facing. So there, uh, he has given the answer of all that. If somebody follows uh, his lecture, I think uh, more than 80% uh, one uh, not to be uh, very uncomfortable or bother the physicians, etc. Uh, in that or um, take care of their pocket also. No? Because visiting the physicians means you have to empty your uh, pocket. Uh, that is there. So, uh, I'm engaged somewhere else because I'm getting a, <coughs> a pressure from behind uh, that uh, you wrap up. Uh, with these words, uh, Dr. Khanuja, we had wonderful talk and um, you made mention of bio-enhancer, bio-productivity and the sambar which uh, um, half of the country uh, loves it and eating since ages uh, using this your uh, moringa. Uh, <coughs> And uh, that uh, now we know what all it contains and uh, you uh, take it with the rice also now. Good example and they are taking with rice only whether they take it with idli or dosa or simple this uh, uh, <coughs> rice or different preparations of rice. So uh, it's a good one. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Kanuja has left indelible impression at least on BSHF. And I think uh, we will be working together. Let us see, we have got some common interest, common areas of work also somewhere. Whatever little we know about the horticulture, we will be ready to part with him. So with these words, I just thank uh, Dr. Rajan and profusely Dr. Kanuja. First of all, for agreeing to deliver the talk. Second one, to deliver the talk. And third one, a very uh, useful talk. Uh, easily understood by everybody and which is useful to everybody and he has brought the terminology which uh, would have been brought uh, long back uh, pharma and farm all those things see a farmer is taken in this country as a person who is uh, whatever is not a prideful profession but you know if dr khanuja's talk and advice is followed and people come to understand. I think uh, the, the, uh, what we have got doubling farmer income and all these projects, uh, uh, they are not required. On its own, this uh, farmer will become rich. That's what he has said. Uh, he's not a doubling of the farmer, but the multiple. Uh, it can multiply several times. They have got the, the potentials. Only thing we have not shown the right path, right way and um, uh, in a right perspective that things are lacking hope country will come to that uh, chances and the farmer condition will improve and uh, things like that as the Dr. Kanuza had told if the farmers follow it definitely if everybody start following everybody will be get uh, double. but some of them uh, if they follow they will definitely um, uh, harvest uh, a uh, fantastic thing and can have a better life and uh, see Dr. Kanuja uh, at the age of 49 years uh, even up the job and he is in the service of the society. I wish him and his organization great, great success and great contribution. Thank you very much, sir. With these words, I thank once and all Shivanji, Rajan, uh, Kanuja, sir. Thank you very much. And as usual, we will meet uh, next Tuesday um, uh, with some other topic. 
uh, till then i think goodbye uh, this will be the, the talk uh, i think rooftop vegetable garden there also uh, the, the nutrition will be provided our emphasis is only on nutrition through horticulture thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you good night good night goodbye